Harvey. And I'm going to talk about um, how you test uh, data that, large amounts of data that you've migrated into a Drupal site from some uh, legacy CMS or um, I think it could be WordPress, Joomla, some CMS that somebody's built themselves, uh, or maybe just play MySQL database. So, kind of a prerequisite to, to, to this talk, although you don't really need to know about it, um, so don't worry if, you, if you've never used the migration as a migrate module. Um, that provides a load of classes that you can extend um, that allow you to um, create a process data from a uh, legacy MySQL database into it, into Drupal nodes and some of these can use it. Um, so this sort of interface, this is kind of a nice interface that um, the, the migrate module provides you with uh, familiar to, to some of you if you've done migration before. Uh, if you haven't, uh, there's a really good talk uh, that I think you pronounced the name Mosh uh, by um, we did it at Drupal, uh, DrupalCon London a couple of years ago. Um, so look that up. Uh, that's a great starting point. So when uh, you're working for a client, as uh, a company I work for quite often, uh, the deliverable um, is not a finished Drupal site, but a migrated client. So uh, we quite often work on an isolated project, which is purely to migrate a load of Drupal, uh, a load of data into a new Drupal uh, system. Um, and the deliverable is not that data; it's just a migrate class. You can you can run again and, and again as many times as you want as your data changes. Uh, you can re-import it. So how do you how do you know that that migrate class is 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 working? I mean, you could do some unit tests on on the code that you. Uh, created uh, in that migrate class to make sure that each uh, method in there do, does what you uh, expect it to do. But I suppose the, the proof that it works um, when you finish is that all your, migra your data is migrated uh, correctly. So um, as we did one or two of these migrations, we began to think, well, how, uh, how can you actually test that data, a lot of the stuff, a lot of the stuff to be built into Drupal um, is designed for testing your code, testing the functionality of that code, it's not, to, it's not to actually test the data uh, that's in there. So let's take an example of um, migrating a URL from a source database to a destination. Uh, maybe that um, URL for the same argument is just in, a, in a, a plain text field and maybe people in the past have been able to edit that, paste it into it, make all sorts of mistakes. Um, and the source data itself might be really, um, really dirty and messy. And then maybe you're, maybe you're going through quite a complicated uh, migration process as well. So maybe you have to do some sort of parsing to get out these URLs before they can be put into Drupal. You want to make sure that that process that you've written is working as well as uh, the source data was, was usable to start with. Um, so we could end up with stuff like this where um, which is migrating completely broken URLs. So, enter Drupal web tests. So, Drupal web tests are a um, a class provided by the simple test module in Drupal 7.4. It's available for Drupal 6. Um, I think it's in Drupal 8 core as well. Um, and it, that, that's a class that you can extend um, to run tests. Uh, on a, an entire Drupal installation. So um, it's an alternative class um, called a, unit, a Drupal unit test, um, which allows you to run tests on just isolated pieces of code that are not connected to any database. Drupal web tests, on the other hand, allow you to connect to uh, a, a database. Um, and the way it does that is it creates a new uh, sandbox it's not actually creating a new database, but it copies all the ta tables in your database, gives them a uh, prefix or suffix, um, and uses them so that any, if any of your tests break any of the data, it doesn't matter, because um, the database just gets deleted at the end of the test. Um, again, I won't go in too much into writing uh, web tests here, but there's um, a great, uh, I think this is Chris, Chris Tankersley, um, who's got a blog with some great posts. Writing web tests and unit tests. 
Um, so, by its very nature, it's completely useless out of the box for, for actually testing that your the data is actually expected because it's created this uh, sandbox database, which is just a really default um, uh, copy, I suppose, of the of the Drupal database that you're using for your site. So it doesn't include any configuration, um, doesn't include any content. So we decided that we had to break web test just a little bit. Uh, doesn't mean anything horrible like hacking it. Uh, if you remember, it's, it's designed to be extended. So we're going to extend this web test class um, and we're going to force it to use our existing database. So the way we do this is we create a new class that extends the Drupal web test case and we create a setup function. Uh, a setup method. Now that, that method controls what happens um, when, when the test environment is set up initially. So uh, by default it's going to clone all those tables um, and uh, uh, sorry, uh, create a new a load of tables with the same schema um, and then it's going to delete them afterwards. So what we've got in here is just a very simple flag to say setup equals true, which means that uh, the web test case assumes that the database has already been set up. So this flag, uh, out of the box that's set up at the end of the process, we're skipping that process of creating the, those database tables. Um, now some alarm bells might be ringing in some of your heads, you might be thinking, well wait a minute, we're running loads of tests here on uh, what's, obviously it's not going to be a live database, but it's going to be probably your test environment, or there's going to be valuable stuff that you want there. Um, well, what's very important to start with is uh, that you have a teardown function as well, because by that out of the box of Drupal web test case, it's going to delete all those clone tables at the end. And I've done this, and I thought, where, where's all my database gone? Then I realised I forgot to <coughs> overwrite that teardown function, and don't put anything in it, so nothing happens, and it doesn't get deleted. Okay, so. This is fast because <coughs> you're not creating new uh, uh, you're not creating new tables every time you run a test. Uh, it's kind of dirty for the reasons we talked about, and it's dangerous um, because and you don't really want to be writing. You want to make sure that uh, your tests are not going to affect your data. They're just reading from that data and checking where those fields on your nodes. You don't want to be um, changing it in any way, but it works okay. Uh, acting with safety first, unlike Boris being careless here. Don't be like Boris, please. Uh, you wouldn't wish it on anyone. Um, so, there's an alternative to this. You can download Simple Test 2, which is not in uh, Drupal Core. Um, that's a contrib module um, which you can install. I think there's another module you can get as well, which allows you to easily switch between the Core Simple Test and Contrib Simple Test. And you can use Drupal Clone Test Case, which kind of does what it says on the tin, does what web test case does, but instead of setting up uh, a load of tables just based on the schema of your existing tables, it actually copies all those tables with data as well. So you've got the entire copy of your um, of your of your uh, test site in a, in a new set of tables. Um, there are some ifs and buts. Um, you, I think, I think it works in uh, the stable version of Simple Test 2, um, but there's also a patch that you need to apply. Um, so you have to go rummage around for patches and stuff and sort of uh, kick it a little bit before it, before it actually works. Um, but that, in the end, is going to be a safe way to do it. So then you can just create your uh, migrate uh, test class. In this case, it's an absolute <coughs> class, and I'm going to extend it again later, and then I'll talk about that. Um, and you can start writing your tests in there. So, things are going to go wrong. Uh, you, you're migrating from uh, MySQL database or, or some other database, you don't really know what's in there. Uh, it might be years and years old. The, the actual interface <coughs> that people have used to, enter, to put data in that database might have changed over time, so validation rules and things might have changed. Um, uh, we constantly come uh, across um, 
examples where people have posted blog posts and been asked to type their name in as the author of that post, and it's completely free text. So someone who's written 20 blog posts, maybe they haven't even typed their name in themselves, maybe somebody else has done it for them, spelled their name wrong, done it with small letters with long capitals. Um, so you might have one person with 15 different variations in a name. So as long as, you, as long as you fail usefully, that's okay. As long as you know about it, you can fix it. So um, decide an acceptable uh, failure rate. If you're migrating 100,000 uh, nodes, you might think, well, I don't really mind checking 100 of them, perhaps at a push. Um, and you, you probably want to offset this against how much extra code you're going to have to write to catch all those exceptional cases. So if you're going to spend a day and a half writing, writing extra code, or you can just get someone to check it. Uh, Amazon Sweatshop, I mean, Amazon uh, Mechanical Turk, that might be a good one. Uh, um, or do it yourself. But everything needs to be logged so that you need to know um, when something's gone wrong uh, and you need to um, notify it manually. So, after writing a few of these tests for different fields on uh, different migrations, uh, we sort of found that we were, we were coming across, uh, we were repeating ourselves quite a lot. So, um, when you're creating these test classes, uh, you'd have a title field, you'd have a um, user's email address, for example, um, and a lot of the time, you, you, you're constantly specifying quite simple tests that you might want to carry out, and you're constantly mapping those, you're constantly specifying what, which fields we need to run those on. So, sort of dominant, we might be able to make a few shortcuts here and abstract things a little bit. So, um, we came up with this migrate data, uh, migrate data test case class, which extends uh, the Drupal uh, core test, uh, test, uh, test classes, um, and it will do certain things for you. So it fetches a list of the nodes that you've migrated, um, so that you know what you're going to test. Uh, it loads it loads those nodes, and it also loads the nodes that correspond to those from the source. So one thing that the migrate module does really nicely for you is index every single migration on a node by node node. Uh, basis as it takes place. So what you end up with is a, uh, I think it's called a migrate map underscore something table, which just lists the uh, source ID of each uh, row new source table and the destination node ID that that, that data has been uh, migrated to. So um, the migrate data test case handles that for you and basically gives you two things that you can then compare um, to a rate. Um, the logging errors, this was, this was quite a, uh, an important thing because we were handing migrate classes over to clients who were running them themselves and then wanted to fix them themselves, um, fix any data themselves that, that hadn't migrated properly. So they wanted a, a, a nice report so that when they're overnight uh, migrates were running, they could wake up in the morning, look at a spreadsheet and see, ah yes, I need to fix this, this and this because we didn't think everyone heard of that guy and maybe he's spelled his author name wrong or something and this email address is informatic or whatever. Um, and it's extendable, as I'll show you in a minute. So I've set up a, a, a sandbox here if you want to um, experiment with some of that code. Um, so this is an example of extending the migrate data uh, test case. And uh, I'm going to go back to that example a few slides ago with, uh, um, with the URL, so migrating some uh, links. Um, and what we've got here, this is, this is the only big chunk of code I've got. So this is... Uh, the web test case or the clone test case provides this get info uh, method, which allows you just to specify uh, information about that particular te the test. So when you're running through the Drupal interface later or you're running through Drush, um, it 
it's got a name, it's got a group, so you can uh, you can run tests, uh, groups of tests at a time if you want to. So that's just kind of net metadata about the test. Then uh, this is the actual method that gets called automatically by simple test. So uh, it can be called anything with a lowercase test in front of it and then a little description afterwards. Uh, after it. So I'm going to call this test link. And I'm going to specify two uh, fields to test here. So uh, one is the title uh, and one is the body. So this method add field test allows you to uh, add, uh, it basically just adds to an array um, the name of the field that you're going to test and then it also adds, uh, well the callbacks um, adds the name of a function uh, or, or a method that you want to run that will return true or false to say whether that particular uh, piece of data is acceptable. Um, and we've done this for two fields, so you can see I've passed one argument here. Um, that's just a little shortcut because title, the, the name of the field is the same in the sources as in, it is in the destination, so we can just call it title. Uh, here the fields have slightly different names, so uh, this is um, destination and this is the source. I guess you're not going to migrate your URL straight to body, but this is just an example. Uh, and then this is a function uh, here that um, just says whether or not this gets called back uh, and it says whether or not that uh, URL is, um, is, a, is a valid URL and it turns true if it is false if it is. So you could, I mean you could extend this uh, vastly and you could also use, you see here that this uh, this method gets passed to it the source and the destination. So if you wanted, rather than just uh, checking it's a valid URL, um, you could you could check it against the destination data. So maybe you're stripping out HTML tags or something. So then you'd want to compare uh, the the uh, destination with the stripped tags against what the source looked like before you strip the tags. Um, so this is the demo. Uh, so I'm going to run, say very confidently, I'm going to run a test that I set up uh, earlier, which is basically the, the one that I've shown you on the slides. Um, I'm going to do it through Josh. Everyone should use Josh. So just gives you, well simple test gives you this test run command which isn't working because it's not my folder. So just test run just gives you a massive uh, array of uh, tests that are, uh, all these are in core. So, uh, these, you can choose any of these to run. Uh, the one I find, I think it's called link something. Yeah, so I'm going to run links. Okay, so that test is run. It's given us a tiny little report there uh, that says um, what to run, uh, whether it's passed, uh, how many things have passed, how many things have failed. I've only got one test, so I've got no pass, and I've got one fail. Um, and then it just it just tells you what it's doing at the end, whether it's removing leftover tables or anything that has sort of residue from the test. Um, and now, what, what, what sort of happened behind the scenes was it created this uh, CSV uh, file with a report of the test that you've run and what's gone wrong. So, let me see if I can find this.
so that's a very simple CSV file. Let's see if I can open it up. Office, it might make a bit more sense. So uh, I've got three things that have failed there. Um, this tells you the um, test uh, class that I've run, because you might have a whole library of these classes and you want to uh, identify which one this refers to. Um, that's a particular method that you call to, to, to run this test. So we call that method on the, on the uh, URL field. Uh, that's the source ID, so you can look at them very easily on your, in your uh, source data table. That's the node ID that it's migrated to, uh, and then it gives you the name of the source and destination field. Uh, and that's the source value, and that's the destination value, and you can see that that's a broken URL. It's not a bit better, but I think it's a T missing or something. Um, yeah, and there's a semicolon in there or something. Um, so then you can go back and you can. Either, either then you can go and create another iteration of your uh, migrate class to fix those things, um, or you can just say, right, we'll just fix those manually, we know about them, we know where to find them. I can easily go and identify that node out of the 100,000 that I've just migrated. Um, so that's how we've done testing for uh, large amounts of data migrated with the migrate model. Thank you very much. Anyone would like to ask any questions? Just a quick one. What point is it worth using this over just writing something into my grade itself as part of me to prepare roles and something like that? I know you probably